Taylor Jones. And I'm Phil Porterano. And today we're going to talk about the importance of having a business mentor. How could Phil not be a perfect fit for the Hello Group? Hello, I'm Phil Porterano. I'm about to become the president of the Hello Group. I'm very proud to do so. I look forward to working with each of you. Uh, the way Taylor and I met is, of course, over an artist. There was an artist that I was involved in. She had the good insight to identify that we both could bring something to her career. As a result of that, she put the two of us together. And in fact, Taylor and I figured out immediately, not only could we both bring something to our bright young artists, but in fact, we could complement one another extremely well in the marketplace, not only on her record, but on every record for every artist. Being connected with Phil via an artist that needed both a digital approach as well as that traditional appeal and that, that expertise within the recording industry provided a very organic environment for myself and Phil to connect. So we shared a lot of qualities that I think um, are very rare to find, uh, especially when, when you consider you know the different backgrounds, the different cultures that we've been raised in. It was a very organic introduction and I think uh, one that has quite clearly panned out to be a natural partnership for us. I think when I met Taylor very quickly, probably the first time I ever met him, uh, I recognized his skill and his talent. It didn't take more than a couple of meetings to realize that we could really complement one another. Having a mentor that equally understands uh, the passion and the mission that you're on. Uh, for example, Phil and I, we both have an ambition to treat, to be an artist first company, to be a talent first company. It was about being new and being different and working together with artists and using passion and integrity as driving forces within our company. And Phil shared a very, very similar vision. The music business, like any entertainment business, is really rooted in two things. It's rooted in the foundation of art and commerce. You've got to be able to read a trend, live in a trend, and work in a trend. Living and working in trends in our business is often a young man's business. However, to be able to be the steward of the great careers and go with those 25, 35, and 40 year relationships. That can only come with age. The best teams in the business are combinations of those ingredients. And I knew that Taylor, I recognized very quickly that Taylor had very good instincts, had a finger on the pulse of trends and where the action was in what markets, in the street, and with the consumer. I can bring to the puzzle the senior relationships the long-term careers between us, there's nowhere on the spectrum that we don't have covered. And that's a big advantage. I'm looking for a mentor who can give me the tool set to make the right decisions. When sourcing a mentor, it's important to find someone uh, who first of all is experienced and you know can take a collective, calm and guiding approach when giving you advice. It's important to find someone who's not a yes man, and who isn't afraid to tell you how it is and to give you their opinion not because it's the, what you want to hear, but because it's what they feel is right and correct. Who cares as much as you do, who works as hard as you do, and who wants to see you succeed as well as themselves. My primary responsibility as a mentor would be to help those I mentor to not make the mistakes I made, but at the same time, to not in any way stifle that enthusiasm, which is the driving force. To give someone the foundation, the pillars and the tools to succeed, in any environment, in any situation, under any condition. If a good mentor is giving his student those tools, the student can never fail. Having a mentor saves a lot of my time when it's uh, an important decision making. It saves a lot of my time when I need to get in contact with someone who I don't already know, but that mentor does and it's just a phone call away from them. Uh, and I think it also adds to your workload because that mentor is so well connected that they're bringing in so many opportunities. I'd hope that the role of a mentor would always remain, but I guess the, the, another hope is that I can also offer the same value one day that my mentor offers me. So long as they can both complement each other moving forward and that you grow together as a team, um, I don't see the roles changing so much uh, besides having you know, more and more celebrations. <laughs> Hello Group is gonna be very, very successful, domestically and globally. I think that for two reasons. First of all, I am of the school that you always strive to do something different and or better. If you're not doing something different or better, don't do it. I think that we have the ability to do both. The combination of our uh, interests, our careers, our drive, I believe we can attract
very good executive as well as artistic talent. I also believe we can get a good result for both. The business is still a business of talent. It's still a business of hits. I know how to do those things. I know how to build careers from the bottom and stay with them. And Taylor brings an element of knowing how to best use technology and the digital landscape to our advantage. I think any entrepreneur needs to stand on their own feet for a period of time. It's important to discover who you are, the kind of leader you want to be, the kind of team player you want to be. I was given the ability, along with my co-founders, you know, determine what kind of company we wanted to build. Did we want to really focus on the entertainment sector you know, as a whole, or were we f focusing on the, the music vertical within that scope to struggle, to flourish, uh, to have adventure. Uh, building the company has allowed me to discover who I am, to mature. When you're ready to take the business to the next step, that's when you need someone like Phil, who has experience running a global corporation. I like to uh, celebrate the small things as well as the big things. Sign a record deal for one of our smaller upcoming artists and that's been their dream since we started working together. That's also for me a huge achievement. I feel good that we've been able to make that happen for that particular person. I think when it comes to a mentor, success is defined when a joint plan and a joint decision has really played out the way that you anticipated it to play out. My ambition and the Hello Group ambition really complement one another. My ambition is to take the 40 years of experience that I've built and I'm dying to use it because I have a mission in my life. Before I leave this earth, I want music to be important again because I think it's been completely devalued in the last few years. That's only paralleled by my colleagues at the Hello Group currently. Their ambition to be in this business, play hard and win big, it's a perfect match. The most important lesson that I've learned so far would have to be not to rush my decisions on impulse. I'm responsible for, for the greater good for our artists. It's important for me to remain calm and collective and consider various different approaches and options before making decisions. And you know, that's exactly what a mentor helps me do. Probably the most important lesson I've learned from a mentor is to not ever compromise my own integrity, trying to establish someone else's. You never want to misrepresent an artist, but you also never want to misrepresent yourself. And that's an important lesson I learned along the way. Five years I ran Warner Brothers, we had the number one album of the year, each of the five consecutive years in a row. CEO of Virgin Records for 11 years, president of Warner Brothers Records, five years, president of EMI North America, five years. Uh, I spent a few years at Shazam as a consultant, helping them build in much more music component than just the tech ID system they started out with. I've also served on the Gibson Guitar Board uh, for six years, two of which I was the chairman of the board, and I worked also on the Fender Guitar Board. Most notably, I went to uh, the Newhouse School, which is the foremost journalism school in the country, part of Syracuse University, where I met uh, two, two guys who ended up ultimately being my roommates and, my, and are still my oldest and best friends. Rob Light, who is currently the biggest music agent in the world, runs CAA and John Sykes, who is one of the founders of MTV and is currently the president of iHeart. I think having Phil on board will absolutely boost our ability to sign new clients. Clients that require the experience of a, an executive who's been in the business for a long time, who has relationships and contacts at president, CEO level across the board. That's something that Phil is able to bring to the table globally. I think anyone who's been very successful within their field have done so by taking risks and by, um, you know, putting things on the line that they might not necessarily want to put on the line. Uh, Phil has achieved an enormous amount within his career uh, and will continue to do so, hopefully, uh, alongside us. And uh, I like to take risks to, to get things done. And I think if you don't, if you're not a risk taker, um, there will always be opportunities that will not present themselves to you. The better, the better person you are, the better music executive you'll be. You do everything with integrity, you treat everyone with dignity, and you have to be true to yourself. If you do your job with dignity in the music business, you're already outplaying 99% of the people in the music business. If you treat every artist with dignity, whether they're the biggest artist on the roster or the smallest, they all need to feel like they're the most important artist in your life when you're sitting across from them. And they know it, and they feel it, and that's what makes the difference. If that mentor is still looking to you know, earn money and grow financially within his activities, then perhaps 
bringing him into the company either for a share swap or providing a wage for a position on the board, for example, could be a part of what designs that package. If the mentor is looking for something other than a cash consideration for their time and their effort, perhaps the autonomy to be part of a team, to give their advice, to lend their experience to a group of individuals um, could also be considered very rewarding. That We've got a different view of the same model. We're approaching it from a different vantage point. We think that we can attract almost a franchise type of model into our conventional stiff business and make a more flexible, fluid model that delivers a more, more respectable result than what the current business can do. The Hello Group, I believe, will have several advantages. First of all, I'm hoping for an artist, it will be, uh, or for an agency, or for anybody in the marketing business, or in the brand, or career development business. It's a one-stop shop. We will have a silo that represents every single, every single discipline in the entertainment business. We just want to be the best in every area, and we think we can do that. Uh, what Taylor brings to the table with his digital uh, acumen and intellect and the use of influencers, combine that with the established agency advertising distribution models in the world and you're going to have an explosive result. I've had the opportunity to bring on some mentors before. As you rise and as you grow as an entrepreneur, there are a lot of people who'd like to mentor you or be involved in your business. Mentors are select with the, the students that they you know, mentor, but equally entrepreneurs need to choose the right mentor for them. I had a, you know, a manager beforehand as an artist and we're not working together anymore because we had our personal differences. There were values that I took from that experience, whether those experiences were negative or positive. So I think making the best out of, out of the advice and then learning from the negative experiences are always important. Teamwork is dream work. So if I don't agree with my mentor's advice in particular, that's not to say that you know, the co-founders and the other members of the board and our other colleagues at the company won't necessarily agree with that advice. Realistically, if you choose the mentor that adheres to your values and has experience within the field that you're operating in, that advice traditionally will be very valuable. There are several students who don't agree with my advice and I don't want to impose myself on anyone. It's like any school, there's a criteria to be in the school. I've been around long enough to know that some people want to learn to do things and other people just want to do things. If they don't want to learn, then I'll excuse them from the class. One of my you know, utmost mentors is a guy called Stefan Kerakoffs who uh, runs Dinner in the Sky and he also runs a very successful event agency. Within the Hello event sector and the things that we do around events, he's a perfect guy to be a mentor for me and for me to call and he can assist with certain situations, but he's not as involved in the group level of the company because our businesses and our niches differ so much. With Phil Q, um, he's a mentor that we connected so well with and he had so much experience within the exact same field that we're looking to grow in that it makes sense. Another mentor of mine is Tim Byrne, uh, who was the creative director of Psycho for a very long time and, uh, you know, mentors me personally and is a very good friend of mine. And so long as it doesn't cloud your judgment too much and you're not receiving too many ideas from too many places uh, and, you know, for that particular situation to become counterproductive, I think having more than one mentor is always a good idea. I had several mentors in the business. Um, the person who impacted me the most was Branson. Richard instilled a spirit in me. I'm already a, kind of a fun-loving uh, person. I make sure that everything that we do, no matter how hard we work, has an element of good nature and good fun attached to it. But Richard took that to, a, to an art because everything he did was fun, but everything he did resulted in success. One of my all-time idols as an entrepreneur has to be Sir Richard Branson. One of my models was, you know, I want to build the next version. One day I want to have not only Hello Management, the Hello Group, but Hello Holidays, Hello Hotels, Hello Mobile, Hello Airlines. It was very, very coincidental that Phil and I met considering he's worked alongside Branson for so long. You know, Phil called me up and he said, hey, Richard Branson's receiving a Hollywood star. Uh, on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, would you like to go? Because I'm going to be sat right there at the front, on the front row, uh, next to Sir Richard Branson's wife, and we're going to, you know, watch him un unveil his star. So I had the opportunity to go and meet Richard Branson, and um, you know, say a, a, a very brief but uh, appreciative hello. Uh, that was definitely an experience that I won't forget. The expectations within a mentor relationship entirely depend on 
in what capacity your mentor is involved. Perhaps it's picking up the phone when you need it and they'll give you some solid advice. If that mentor is involved in the infrastructure of your business, I think the expectations will be set on um, actually getting the job done. If he gives you a task or advises you to do something that you agree with, I need to get the job done and that will be my mentor's expectation, but that also applies vice versa. Sometimes you want to you know, attend meetings with your mentor. You want to pitch things together. You want to share your joint enthusiasm or passion towards a certain project and that can only be done when you're in the same location. Hey, I mean, what's the role of a mentor? A mentor is finding someone who has achieved more than you, you know, has more experience than you in that field and typically speaking, that also comes with an age gap. And I think Phil teases me often because I'm so young, um, but I think equally I'm so ambitious and that's, you know, I show that in my eyes and I show that within my body language and the way that I present things and talk about things. And um, I like to think that, that inspires the both of us. I signed uh, most notably Linkin Park and Josh Groban, both very big careers in the years I ran Warner Brothers. We made Roy Orbison's last record that he was alive. That did very, very well. On Paula Abdul's first album, at that time, it was the most number one records ever off a debut female vocal album. When I was worked at A&M, we released Frampton Comes Alive. That, at the time, was the biggest double live album of all time. Les Paul befriended me. He asked me if we could make his last record. That album included uh, Paul McCartney and Sting and Jeff Beck. Myself and Les Paul won two Grammys for that, and we're very proud of that. A three- or four-legged stool is a lot more stable than a one-legged stool. Um. I'm excited for us, I'm proud of him, anxious to get my sleeves rolled up and dig in. <laughs> dig into the pie face first and get the job done.